Fulan Davy. Unmasking the Bandit Queen Fulan Davy's life story is both tragic and compelling. Known as the Bandit Queen, she turned her grievous personal suffering into a fight against the caste and gender oppression that marked her early life. Her transformation from a victim of severe abuse and exploitation to a revered outlaw and later a politician is quite remarkable. Her role as a Robin Hood-like figure for the other backward classes highlights how she was perceived as a champion for the oppressed. She used her notorious actions to challenge the societal structures that marginalized many like her. The Bimai Massacre was a pivotal event in her life, leading to heightened efforts to capture her. But it also cemented her status as a symbol of defiance. Fulan Davies' eventual surrender, imprisonment, and political career add further layers to her legacy, making her a complex figure in Indian history. Some revere her as a hero, while others revere her as a criminal. Her assassination adds a final, tragic chapter to her dramatic life story, leaving her a controversial and iconic figure. Welcome to our channel, where we delve into extraordinary tales of defiance and transformation. Today, we uncover the enigmatic life of Fulan Davy, the bandit queen, a figure shrouded in myth, born from the dust of Uttar Pradesh's ravines. Stay with us as we trace her journey from a vilified bandit to a celebrated politician, questioning the thin lines between heroism, villainy, and justice along the way. In the deep folds of rural India, amidst the stark landscapes of Uttar Pradesh, Fulan Devi began her life. Born into poverty in the lowly Mala caste, her early years were marked by hardship and injustice. Imagine a young girl, spirited and defiant, facing the harsh realities of caste discrimination and gender violence. Her story began with an act of rebellion, eating chickpeas from her disputed land, an image of innocence pitted against ruthless power. By the age of 11, Fulin was thrust into the brutal adult world through a child marriage. Married to a man thrice her age, she faced abuse that seemed designed to break her spirit. But even as she grappled with the horrors of her marriage, her fiery spirit refused to be extinguished. This period of her life set the stage for her transformation, as each act of violence against her seemed only to strengthen her resolve. Kidnapped by a bandit at a young age, Fulan was catapulted into the lawless wilderness of the Chamber Ravines. Here, she was not just a victim, but a survivor who learned to navigate the complex dynamics of banditry. Her captor, a brutal bandit leader, became the first of many adversaries she would turn into stepping stones towards her leadership. As she took control of the gang, Fulan Davy became a name that invoked both fear and admiration. As the leader of the gang, Fulan orchestrated raids against upper caste villages, redistributing wealth among the lower castes. Her transformation into the Bandit Queen was not merely about survival, but retribution and justice, as perceived by her and her followers. This was a woman who, stripped of everything, found the power to strike back, turning her pain into a rallying cry for the oppressed. The Bimai Massacre was a chilling episode where 20 men were lined up and shot dead, allegedly under her command. This brutal act of vengeance brought her notoriety to a fever pitch and set off a massive search. It was Fulan's most controversial moment, one that would define the rest of her life. How does one judge her actions? Was this justice served or brutality mirrored? In 1983, Fulan Davy did something unexpected. She surrendered. But even in surrender, she displayed remarkable agency negotiating terms that underscored her notoriety and the government's desperation. This was a moment of profound contradiction, Fulan standing before the symbols of Durga and Gandhi, embodying both the warrior and the peacemaker. After over a decade in prison, Fulan emerged not with a desire for vengeance, but for change. Transitioning into politics, she used her infamy as a platform to champion the causes of the marginalized. In Parliament, she fought for the rights of women and the poor, advocating for those who, like her, had been silenced and oppressed. Her assassination in 2001 was as dramatic as her life. Fulan Davy was shot outside her own home, 
a shocking end that reignited debates about her legacy. In death, as in life, she remained a polarizing figure, celebrated as a hero by some and reviled as a criminal by others. Before we can fully understand Fool and Davy, we must first understand the world she was born into. Banditry in the ravines of Chamber has been not just a form of rebellion, but a cultural response to systemic oppression. The rugged landscapes of these areas provided a natural refuge for those marginalized by society outlaws and heroes forged by circumstance. In these harsh terrains, Fulan found both sanctuary and captivity. The dacoits, or bandits, of Chamber often started as victims of severe economic and social injustices. Some revered them as modern-day Robin Hoods, challenging the status quo and redistributing wealth. Fulan Davy's emergence as a female bandit leader was unprecedented. Her rise was inspiring and controversial in a domain dominated by men. She became a symbol of female resistance, challenging not only caste oppression, but also patriarchal norms. Her actions prompted a larger discourse on women's rights in India, influencing feminist movements. Fulan's life was a testament to the extreme measures taken by women pushed to the brink. Her narrative questioned the limits of victimhood and agency in a society rigidly structured against marginalized women. Fulan Davies' banditry and the subsequent Bimai massacre had far-reaching political and social consequences. Her actions underscored the failures of the Indian state in addressing rural poverty and caste-based injustices. Her life forced a national introspection about the law and its reach, highlighting the often blurred lines between villainy and survival. Following her surrender, the government faced pressure to reform to better address the needs of the rural poor and the lower castes, who saw Fulan as a figure of retributive justice. Her story spotlighted the need for systemic change, a plea for justice from those unheard. Fulan Davies' surrender was not merely an end, but a strategic move. Negotiating her surrender terms, she ensured her safety and the welfare of her gang. This act was a masterstroke, highlighting her insight and understanding of the political landscape she was maneuvering. Her surrender, watched by thousands, was a spectacle a moment where the lines between the state and the individual, the oppressor and the oppressed, were publicly blurred. It was a powerful statement of her control over her narrative. Even in captivity, Fulan's years in prison were transformative. Far from breaking her spirit, they sharpened her sense of justice and political ambitions. She studied, learned about her rights, and prepared for a future beyond the prison walls. Her time in confinement raised questions about the treatment of women in incarceration, especially those like Fulan, who came from severely disadvantaged backgrounds. Her resilience turned her prison cell into a crucible of change. Fulan Davies' assassination did not put an end to her story. Instead, it opened new chapters in discussions about her legacy. Today, she is studied, debated, and remembered in various capacities scholarly, politically, and culturally. Her life inspires art, literature, and cinema, reflecting the enduring intrigue and complex emotions she invokes. Her story challenges us to reflect on our perceptions of morality, justice, and heroism. Fulan Davies' saga is not just a tale of personal vengeance or simple heroism. Her life story, marked by extraordinary struggle and profound contradictions, forces us to wrestle with complex questions about justice, redemption, and societal change. How do we define right and wrong in a seldom black and white world? Fulan Davy, both celebrated and condemned, embodies these ambiguities. As we reflect on her life from the deep ravines of Uttar Pradesh to the halls of parliament, we see a woman who was shaped by her circumstances, yet strived to reshape the world around her. Her legacy is a mosaic of pain, power, and perseverance, challenging us to think deeply about the roles of victim and victor. Today, Fulan Davy remains a potent symbol. Her story is revisited in films, books, and debates each portrayal offering a new lens through which to view her life. What lessons can we draw from her journey?
Can her story inspire us to pursue justice more compassionately and inclusively? Thank you for exploring the complex life of Fool and Davy with us. Your thoughts and reflections are invaluable. Share them in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel for more explorations into the lives that defy easy categorization and challenge us to think beyond the surface. Join us next time as we uncover more stories that compel, confront, and inspire.